Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hello, my dear sewing friends. It's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity. Now, what's the deal today? I am on the mission to bring these clothes back to life. Now, I will be the first one to tell you that yes, I absolutely love a good shocking upcycle, but let's face it, in reality, in order to bring back to life some of the clothes that we have in our wardrobe, but we don't wear them, you only need, you know, maybe one, maybe two sort of adjustments or upgrades or maybe cut something away and then bam, we're in love with them again and we're ready to wear them for the next couple of years at least. Sort of like mini upcycles, useful, but not necessarily shocking or sexy or wow over the top, but useful. That's the key word here. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started with these mini upcycles. The first project on my sewing table are going to be these pants. I absolutely love the fabric. I love the details that I made on them. These are handmade. And by the way, the stuff that I have behind me, it's all a mixture of handmade and store-bought. So we'll see a variety today. So this is how it looks before. And by the way, I think it looks really nice with this sweater, sort of like this beige ensemble. But anyway, this is the waistband. You kind of see it kind of shifts back and forth. So definitely need a little bit of work. Now these I made I would say eight years ago, eight maybe even nine, and at first I wore them quite a bit but then the waistband I just fell out of love with it and it wasn't really as comfortable so I think I just need to remake the waistband over here and maybe tuck in the cuffs and they will be good to go and good as new because I haven't really worn them in the past five years so this is really going to be like a brand new addition to my wardrobe. So let's go and take a look. I think for the waistband, I'm just gonna go and take a really wide elastic. <laughs> All right, so I have elastic from my stash and I have my pants right over here. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the stitching line that is holding this cord up. And from there, it should be pretty easy. All right, I have removed the stitching. Now I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do a, a really savage move. I'm gonna make a little cut, not to the width of the elastic, but a little bit smaller, somewhere on the inside of this waistband, just because I don't really feel like undoing the serging and then closing it back again. I think it's going to be easier than thread through the elastic, finish it, and then once it's done, I'm just gonna close up this little piece with hand sewing. I think that will be the best way how to go about this. All right, the elastic is in. I basically know what is the length, usual length for the pants, but you know, it never hurts to actually try them on, so that way we know for sure. So I am ready to join the elastic and close up this whole thing. And I actually like how the elastic looks in this waistband. It looks really nice as is, so I'm not going to do anything extra. That really is it. Um, once this is done, I just went ahead and I pulled it through and now I have to close this little opening that I cut previously with scissors with a hand sewing needle and thread. I must say that hand sewing is uh, sort of magical. I recently did a video on hand sewing a full garment and I thought that I was going to find it really, really uh, stressful and uh, you know really time-consuming but I actually found it really relaxing and it did uh, one of the days that I was sewing by hand uh, and filming I had a really really bad headache and I was really feeling under the weather and this kind of like a repetitive motion of hand sewing just really helped to ease it so since then I really enjoy doing these little sort of finishing touches by hand. I used to do that by hand beforehand as well, but um, you know, I wasn't trying to avoid them. But now, to me, it's just kind of like 
whichever works best or whatever I feel like in the moment. Now using the same thread and needle, I'm just going to fold in the cuff and do a couple of tucks over here and over there to secure it all in place. So the pants are ready, but I'm thinking if I actually take this dress, which I wanted to shorten it because uh, I'm just not wearing it enough as a dress, but I would wear it quite often as a t-shirt. So I'm thinking this plus this could actually make a really nice outfit. So I have to determine the length, how short I want to cut it in order to make a t-shirt out of it. Kind of makes it really easy because the t-shirt is striped. So you just mark the stripe where you want it to, to end like this, I guess. You know when I'm doing alterations like these, I always, always have to remind myself that I'm not actually cutting exactly where I marked, but a little bit below that, about one inch or so, because I have to account for the hem allowance. So definitely keep that in mind. I've been there, done that. And after that, I'm just gonna go ahead and fold it in for that one inch, and then I'll just use my cover stitch machine and I will hem this entire project. Now, I know you probably don't have a cover stitch machine and I don't want you to feel discouraged at all. So you can complete this alteration, just, you know, cutting off a longer jersey dress um, on a sewing machine or even by hand. And I have a, a quick little video that explains how to do that. So please don't feel discouraged. This is all very possible. I used to hem my knits by hand as well and they're still going strong. So you can totally do that. I will leave the necessary information for you guys in the info box below. And then with whatever cutoff you have, don't throw that away because uh, you can make like a headband out of it or a couple of scrunchies or uh, let's say maybe you have a kid or a grandkid, you can make a cute little skirt for them. So don't throw this away, you can still make a good use out of it. Well, didn't I tell you that these pants are going to look really well with this altered t-shirt? And I think, ta-da, <laughs> we have a combo. And I'm really happy about that because, you know, these were two things that I didn't wear at all and now I can wear them together, which is just a win-win in my book. You see, I told you small alterations make a big, big difference. Now, this next project is actually a really straightforward one. It's a t-shirt. I made it a couple years ago. I love it, but I haven't been wearing it because I have this hole in here. And um, first of all, I don't wanna wear something with a hole. And second of all, I didn't want it to go further. And this is literally like a 15 minute job, maybe even less, but I don't know why I haven't done this before. So today is the day we're going to mend this hole. Now, am I super good at it? No, I am not, but I will try to do my best and make it as invisible as possible. And I think, I think this is pretty decent. I mean, you can kind of still see it, but I think once I put it on, you won't be able to tell that it's there. So let's do exactly that. I think that this t-shirt is back in business. And by the way, you know what? This t-shirt also goes really well with these pants. So I think we're at the triple win at this point. All right, I'm on to my next project. And I gotta tell you, you know what? This video is going surprisingly smooth and mark my words, something's probably gonna go terribly wrong with these next couple of websites because I don't wanna jinx myself. But anyway, this alteration will consist out of uh, two parts. One is going to be mending this hole right over here, which is a very similar situation to the previous white t-shirt. You see this hole right over here? Let me, uh, there it is. There it is. Big, big juicy hole right over here. There we go. And I also need to replace the neck band. And the reason why I have to replace it, number one, because um, it doesn't wanna lay flat anymore. And number two, the fabric that I used for it uh, just has a tendency to accumulate every single cat hair, every single white fuzz that there can be on this planet Earth. So I really don't want that because it just, uh, no matter how much I clean it, it just doesn't, it feels like it never looks well enough. So I just want to completely replace this neck band with uh, either something of the same fabric or maybe like just like a ribbing or something else. So that's the plan. 
All right, so for this big juicy hole right over here, I think it's a no-brainer. I'm just gonna go ahead and mend it to the best of my ability. But if it's a little bit too visible, I might need to figure out then what to do about it. But for the neck band, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it away. I'm not even going to unpick it. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut away the entire seam. And, and I do have some more of the same fabric because I do love a good stripe. So I bought extra way back when. So I'm just gonna use the same fabric in order to uh, replace this neck band. So that should be an easy peasy thing and this will be wearable again because this goes so well with a lot of stuff that I have in my wardrobe. So this is going to be an absolute lifesaver. gonna turn this off so let's take a look drum roll <laughs> all right <laughs> everything matches super nice and neat so there's no white peeking through the neck band is blue just like I wanted it to be so that's the undeniable magic of hand basting people so now I just got to give it a really good press and decide if I want to do some top stitching I'm gonna think about that for a second but basically this is done As you can see, I did skip the top stitching, but you know what? I love it, it works, and I'm ready to wear it. Now, let's move on to the next project. And for this next upcycle, I have this gray cardigan from Tommy Hilfiger that I had for uh, probably five years, many years. So I really want to still make good use out of it, but I do have these holes underneath the armholes that need to be repaired. So that is the first step in this upcycle. I have repaired all of the holes on this cardigan so now it is totally wearable but I do have an extra idea. So I want to add a little bit of sparkle to this cardigan. And the reason for that is because I usually wear this only during uh, winter and maybe like late fall time. And for me, that time of the year is very magical, just very enchanting and uh, sparkle. I love a little bit of sparkle during that time of the year. So I'm thinking, all right, I had it for uh, quite a few years. Let me maybe jazz it up a a little bit so I went to Hobby Lobby I got some sparkly smart iron on and what I'm thinking is to add um, an additional uh, layer of polka dots in between these white ones but this time with a little bit of sparkle and then I have another idea but this time for the buttons here I have a little secret for you. So I usually film two videos at the same time. So one video is usually almost complete, like for example, this one, if we're going through the up cycles. And the other video I start somewhere in between. So that way I have two videos at the same time. One finishes first, the other one still goes, and then I start another one. So it's kind of like a never ending cycle. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I'm currently working on another video where I'm making my own buttons out of resin. So uh, the video is still in progress, obviously, but I made these really cute, clear, sparkly buttons that are just about the same size 
as the cardigan behind me. So since I'm going to be adding some sparkle to it in, uh, in the form of the iron-on, I'm thinking what if I also go ahead and replace the buttons the, for the ones that sparkle just a little bit more. So that's my idea, but if you want to see how I make a whole ton of different resin buttons, definitely tune in next Friday. So that way you can see all of the buttons that I already made and will be making out of resin. All right, so first I'm going to measure, then I'm going to go ahead and create these little polka dots that we will then cut out of the iron-on material. And after that, the final step is going to be actually fusing them on top of the cardigan. So I'm really excited to see how this is going to turn out. Alright, I'm actually on a final stretch here with these buttons. I just have the last one to attach. And um, I don't know, sometimes I feel like clear buttons, especially with uh, sparkles, might add a little bit of a cheaper tone to the garments. But in this case, I don't know, I think they add just enough sparkle to to make this uh, this cardigan even more special. So we'll see, I can always go ahead and change them back to the original ones. But one of the reasons why I'm also doing this is because in the video where I'm going to be making these buttons, I want to be able to talk about how these buttons actually withstand wash, wear and tear, and if this could actually be a good way to make custom custom design buttons that you would particularly like for your project if that's something that you're interested in so i sort of want to use this as a two-in-one i definitely want to wear this cardigan with a little bit of sparkle for the holiday season but i also want to sort of use this as a test subject for these buttons so um, we'll see how that goes um, if you're interested, you definitely will need to check out the video about buttons, but I'm almost done here So once I am let's go ahead and try this on and see how it sparkles I decided to try it on on top of this newly repaired t-shirt just to see if they go together uh, Not necessarily, but that's not the point. Let's go ahead and take a look how the actual cardigan turned out and look at that, it sparkles. It's fun, I think it's fun. I think it's fun for the holiday season. Obviously I need to wear it with something else, but I think it definitely adds that glittery, shimmery vibe that I feel during the holidays and that's exactly what I wanted this to express. So I'm quite pleased with this upcycle. And again, here I want to encourage you to think outside of the box. Yes, in my case, I added these iron-on glitter dots, but in your case, you can add payettes or you can maybe do some embroidery or maybe you can buy some embroidery from the shop, let's say Hobby Lobby or Joann's or wherever else. You can definitely add some some really interesting cool touches to your garments that you want to upcycle without any sort of additional specific things that you need to buy for example like a cricket machine or anything else so definitely think outside the box sort of like get your creative juices going and I'm pretty sure that you will be able to find some unique ways how to upcycle your stuff that you have in your closet all right on to the next upcycle and here i have an easy peasy job i have this tunic that i purchased again many years ago and i used to wear it quite often with leggings but not in the recent years i kind of grew out of love with leggings and um, and i really want to shorten this it has this really fun little hem and i think it could potentially look nice as a shorter top or long sleeve shirt so here i'm gonna do exactly the same thing as we did to the dress a little bit earlier i'm gonna go ahead and measure and then cut and then complete that with a cover stitch and then figure out how it's going to look like with this little fun hem attached
All right, I gotta tell you, I tried. <laughs> I really did because this is such a beautiful addition that I really tried to see. Maybe I can attach it to the sleeves, to the cuffs, or maybe I could do something else with it. Maybe I could attach it higher, lower, whatever. But after trying this on as is, just as a plain simple basic top i actually like it the way it is because it goes really well with a ton of fall and winter pieces that i have in my wardrobe and basics are always a go because you always need them you need them for layering pieces you need them for styling something else on top of them or some other elements that need uh, you know a simple background for them so you know what i think i'm just gonna leave it as is i'm gonna tidy up the hem tuck in all the loose threads and I think this is going to be a winner. I know it's not a, a stunning makeover or, um, you know, I kind of kind of feel bad and I'm not using this additional thing, uh, this really fun hem. But at the same time, I also know that, you know what, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And if I get a ton of wear out of this basic piece, then that's all that matters. So, I don't have anything dramatic that happened, nothing went terribly wrong, although I'm really surprised about that, but I do have one upcycle that is not going to make it into the this upcycle list, and this is this bright orange cardigan, which I absolutely love. I had it for quite a few years, five, maybe even more than five, and one of the things that I was really surprised by is how many holes I actually have in it, and I'm not sure how I got them, I honestly don't remember. Maybe it was a moth, but I did store it in a plastic bag, so if it was a moth, I'm not sure how it got there, but regardless of that, uh, tons of holes, and the mending that I did on them was just a tad bit too visible for my personal taste. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to repair it and I'm going to set it aside and maybe something will come to me. I thought already, well, maybe I could add some embellishment, maybe I could add some embroidery on top of the holes just to cover it. And I've been sitting on it for a couple of days. As you can see, <laughs> I'm wearing I'm wearing uh, my recently uh, mended, mended and upcycled piece. And yes, I've been sitting on it for a couple of days now and nothing really seems right to me and I don't want to do it just for the sake of doing it if I'm actually not going to be wearing it. So maybe it will come to me, I'll put it aside for now. But if you want to see more upcycles, then I do have a really great video for you. So definitely click right over here. I truly hope that this video gave you some really simple, really, really doable ideas on how to upcycle things that you have in your wardrobe. So that way you can love them again. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy thoughtful sewing. I'll see you very soon for another video. Bye.